phone. Uh, let's hope the things happen. Okay, fine. So, uh, you know, uh, the point is uh, the government, uh, different ministries are joined together and uh, decided to go uh, at least by 20, 30, 70 percent vehicles supposed to be an electric vehicle. So, in that, uh, uh, government of India taken a lot of initiative. Uh, one among the institute is called uh, FAME, is nothing but a fast adapted, uh, adaptation of uh, electric mobility. Uh, so, the firm is basically created uh, in a number of stages like FAME 1, FAME 2, FAME 3. Now, we are in the FAME 3 early stage. So, FAME 1 basically talking about uh, for the manufacturing of the subsystem of electric vehicle. It does not mean that to prepare an electric vehicle on the uh, full flushed structure. Uh, like how the Maridi and Mayandra are preparing, it is not like that. Uh, the point is that to create a subsystem like motor and uh, you know bat uh, battery. Uh, let me come later. What is the battery? It is but basically uh, getting the battery from outside and stacking the battery, uh, creating the powering uh, for the motor and uh, other kind of uh, uh, subsystem whatever it is needed for an electrical vehicle. Those are comes under the category of FM one. Coming to FM two, basically started in twenty nineteen. Uh, just before the COVID, they are uh, uh, focusing more on it. Uh, unfortunately, due to the COVID, uh, we are not progressed that much. But now in 2022 and 2021 end onwards, um, the government is taking a lot of initiative and private partners also taking a lot of initiative under the FAME 2. So basically, FAME 2 is full of electrical vehicle charging. So uh, creating a different kind of chargers and uh, you know the slowly this HPCL, VPCL and all. Uh, installing uh, and providing the charging point, probably Adani and Abani, Tata Power, anyone can come forward and uh, you know put the charging uh, plants over there. So kind of uh, public charging and as well as uh, the institutional charging. Uh, now the government is uh, uh, you know taking this uh, foot forward uh, uh, to to get space subsidy and many. So what is the FAME three basically? Uh, just. Uh, uh, this is this is under the talk. Probably the policy will be released soon. But the firm three is basically uh, mean mainly about the supply side. So you are a mechanical engineer. You are you are much uh, you know uh, strong knowledge in the field of uh, material. So you know that material is basically uh, coming from mining, correct? So the battery is a major part in the electrical vehicle. So in the within the battery, as of uh, as of now, the technology is uh, you know uh, in the backside of the lithium ion. Is a uh, basic material. So in now the uh, lithium mining basically happens uh, outside of India. Majorly, it's happened in uh, Northern America, African countries, and China. Uh, so you know, uh, whatever may be a battery technology is coming. Uh, those battery technology is not indigenized. Point number one. Even though some of the uh, batteries are indigenized, uh, we are not going for uh, mass manufacturing. So you just imagine that everyone is buying an you know, electrical vehicle after five years or ten years. You wanted to change your battery in during that point of time. Uh, we don't have a supply chain properly. What I mean that uh, we we should have a mining. We should have a material to manufacture such kind of batteries. Otherwise, what happened? No, due to this geopolitical uh, issue and other things, uh, uh, definitely we are to the rent behind others. Uh, so that's the reason the firm three. Now, India has started to slowly uh, acquiring the mining in North America and South Africa and all. And of course, they are uh, finding a different technology uh, in the energy storage. In the energy storage, again, battery, uh, hydrogen fuel cell based energy storage, those are all comes under the category number three. That is the reason now Adani investing a lot of money. Even Ambani is also group of company and Tata group of companies also investing a lot of money into this field of energy. So that's... Uh, 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 you know, background of this. Okay, let us come to the basic uh, electrical vehicle uh, uh, power train. So, we normally call it as, uh, you know, uh, electrical uh, department or who are working in uh, uh, electrical vehicle. Normally, we say it's a power train. So, what is called power train? Basically, a entire structure except the chassis, vehicle chassis, we normally call it as power train, which means um, in automobile, normally say the uh, vehicle body uh, before uh, the car or bus structured in a proper way, uh, only the engines and tires are connected in a uh, bay. You know? So basically, that is we normally call it as powertrain. So, powertrain, uh, these are the components are available. So, quickly, if you refer battery, inverters, 
which means power electronic converters and motors uh, and how to uh, you know uh, make use of your motors probably a uh, reduction gears uh, so these are the major four components apart from that we have axillary batteries and they definitely want to charge the battery so whether you charge uh, on board charger off board charger Two, two wheeler is probably seen the upcoming slide. So, yeah, yeah, uh, data you want to process, so data analytics or any uh, huge amount of data, uh, 20 years data, 500 years, uh, means uh, 50 years data. So, you maybe need those data. For the upcoming, uh, there is no driver to uh, rent the vehicle, which means uh, drive the vehicle. Apart from that, uh, this all electrical probably uh, you know can be uh, called a simulation. Where my cursor is, you know, so this is basically a mechanical uh, uh, segment only, there is no much different. Whereas the motor I used here is BLDC motor, uh, probably it is a BLDC. EMS motor, any uh, say, uh, say, Probably electrical or power electronics converters, which will be give the power to the uh, respective motors. The other one segment. So it's very simple, like engine. Okay. So a battery and supercapacitor. What is the difference between battery and supercapacitor? Uh, I guess that uh, there are uh, another session they will be clarify this even better. But I will give a small glitch here. Battery is a characteristic having uh, slow charging and uh, slow recharging. Even if you want, you can make a quick charging and quick recharging is possible. But if you have to consider the cost, uh, so slow charging and uh, you know slow recharging probably uh, it's a, a good uh, uh, mind fit into the vehicle in terms of cost. So then, what is the point? Another storage device called a super capacitor because super capacitor. Uh, the character is basically to charge very quickly. So the point is, when the motor is driving, there is no uh, issue for us. Just battery supplying into motor and motor is rotating, then you can pass through the force to the uh, transmission. Whereas when you put a pedal, uh, which means when you apply brake, you know immediately, uh, 35 kilowatt motor. Say for example, the 35 kilowatt motor suddenly are giving braking means, means that we don't want to waste that as a heat. Okay, like a conventional braking. So already these motors, uh, you know, clearly defined with respect to the back EMF. So basically back EMF means that there is a residual energy is available within the motor. So that residual energy is only converting as a force. So when you apply the braking automatically, this residual energy is still available within the motor. So that energy can be quickly stored into supercapacitor. So motor can stop very smoothly. And secondly, this energy, whatever, available with the motor during the braking time, that energy can supply, you know, store in supercapacitor. So again, the supercapacitor either can supply directly or it can supply uh, to the battery. So that is the intention of having a supercapacitor. In one line, we can say the supercapacitor is helping for the regenerative braking. In electrically, we say it's a regenerative braking in the sense that when you apply braking, whatever the uh, losses you may be uh, compromised that that losses will be stored as energy into the capacity. So that is call it as regenerative energy. So then two super one super capacitor and one battery. Uh, so definitely you should have a mechanism to handle those energies. So definitely any vehicle we have another uh, mechanism or subsystem call it as energy management controller or energy management unit. Battery management unit is there, it is called as BMS, that's different, it's taking care of only battery, whereas energy management taking care of the entire power flow of the vehicle. So what I mean that, 
uh, maybe you can see here uh, the arrows are given here. You maybe see the red color arrow. Basically, it's uh, connected to the pedal, braking pedal, and uh, the blue color arrow is connected to the uh, accelerator, and uh, the another arrow is connected to the engine stoves. So maybe uh, when you uh, drive the vehicle, you maybe have a two choice. One is you can drive your vehicle by using accelerator pedal, or you can brake your vehicle using a brake pedal. So during that time. Uh, what is the power flow you are given to the motor, or what is the power you are taken from the motor? That you have to deal through the uh, energy management control. So this is a major subsystem in the electrical vehicle. Okay, let us see how one by one. Take it as a full car body, or I may say it's a uh, power train. So this is a typical uh, certified model. Uh, even if you refer with India, RI is certifying, and uh, some of the agencies are certifying. Society of Automotive Engineering, SAC is certifying. Uh, you know, other foreign countries, if you refer, refer the four wheeler, uh, there are some certification standards. So, what is that? It is battery is supposed to be lay in the bottom of the vehicle. What is it? Reason it is there are different reasons like uh, safety costs and uh, radiation costs. Uh, then. Uh, uh, how to onboard the batteries uh, without uh, uh, you know wasting the places and aerodynamics, uh, thermal equilibrium, mechanical equilibrium, including everything. The architecture or standardization has been built. How to structure a electrical power train? As you can see here, the batteries are placed in the power body, and uh, the BMS is also there. Here you can see, and there are motors are connected in both uh, wheels. So now, with respect to the motor, how is connected to the transmission or into the wheel? This electrical vehicle or hybrid electrical vehicle classify into different way. Like in this vehicle, uh, two motors are connected, so it is basically call it as two wheel drive. Uh, two wheel in sense that actually there are four wheel, but there are two motors are connected. Those motors are directly connected to the wheels, right? For giving an acceleration, so it is called as two wheel drive. Suppose I assume there is only one motor, either it is front or back, it is connected, it's a one wheel drive. Or there are four motors are connected into the all the wheels, like how the scooters are nowadays available, uh, like a hub motor, right? So hub motor means motors are connected or uh, associated within the wheel itself. So if four motors are connected, uh, four motors are powering to accelerate all the wheels during the drive. So that is called as four wheel drive. So now the interest is going into four wheel drive. I will tell you why it is in the upcoming slide. So now, if you take a two wheeler, many of us, many of us, you don't know about two wheeler, but just I wanted to say something. The two wheeler is the best example for a motor. You can see here the motor is connected. Actually, we don't have any uh, chain based uh, motor. Mechanically, we have an engine and we have a, a chain and we are connecting into a wheel in the back wheel. So it's a chain based drive, right? But electrically, there are uh, companies like even TVS, if you refer, the high power motor 3.5 kilowatt uh, vehicle still it is coming in chain drive only. Uh, but nowadays, no companies actually manufacturing chain drive uh, because uh, additional uh, uh, you know, materials they have to use it. And uh, of course, the losses are there during the chain transmission. So now there, everyone is preferring for the hub motor. Early stage, why it is not hub motor is used? The reason is very simple. During the time, the technology of the motor of motor is not that much mature. Now in 2022, there are variety of company, even uh, there are uh, engineering companies also manufacturing, means Indian engineering, indigenization motors are available. So uh, there are two batteries are available in electrical vehicle. One is a low battery, which will be deal uh, your lighting and other things. Uh, even you have applications, right? Uh, uh, app, uh, in the dashboard to know about uh, the battery pack about all about it. so that all uh, basically is a 12 volt battery or even 6 volt battery some of the vehicles are using that is called as low voltage battery which are these batteries not actually supplying to the drive but whereas high voltage battery directly supplying into the motor so please understand uh, the high voltage battery even in a car or in a scooter it is supplying only into the motor so this is actually not connected to the uh, another battery uh, means connected to the, any of the accelerate devices like a sensor or any metering. It is connected to an additional battery, which means accelerate battery or low voltage battery. Whenever the low voltage battery gets drained, the high voltage battery will be charged because you charge only the low, high voltage battery. So the low voltage battery driving the motor and as well as charging the 
low voltage battery so uh, that's what a basic uh, two wheeler and we have a communication system of course even if we take four wheeler two wheeler we have a communication system where uh, uh, the communication system basically uh, to understand what is the charging it is and when the motor is rotating what speed you are going and what battery backups available how long uh, the rest of the mileage you have so everything will be actually uh, so showing into the uh, dashboard which means that your display uh, that is normally there and sensors are available it is according to the cost to cost okay so now uh, car body and the vehicle uh, geometry everything i hope you got a little understanding now entering into little higher uh, understanding so e mobility deployment as a country uh, if you wanted to deploy 100% or close to 100% e mobility particularly in country like india we have we have huge population just imagine per capita vehicle in india actually 0.6 what does mean that uh, uh, means um, six person having one two wheeler actually uh, so that's called per capita so two wheeler segment india is actually, across the world even if you compare with china india is first actually so uh, four wheeler again per capita that uh, that different data are available but what i have understand from the wikipedia it is that uh, 800 people having one four wheeler so that's a per capita so then public transportation commuter vehicle passenger vehicle like a lorry truck and if you are calculated country like india huge populated 1140 crores population country you just imagine all the vehicle supposed to be convert as an electrical vehicle what is the change we wanted to build and if the change will be get sustained or not uh, assume that 2025 or 2020 2030 all vehicles are at least 50 percent vehicles are convert as an electrical vehicle just uh, think whether we have a charging station maybe in srm itself we don't have a charging station so maybe uh, our uh, college maybe uh, you can consider uh, 500 vehicles are coming into the main campus every day we don't have any single charging station so probably these all we have to think and we have to structure uh, build infrastructure then only can plan for the 100% or close to 100% deployment and very important finally uh, supply chain so now we all bought the electrical bikes 5 to 6 years over then we want to replace the electrical battery so during the time india don't have a mining as i already told you india don't have indigenous system or india don't have a big manufacturing facility to manufacturing the huge amount of battery for all the indian people then we have to blame uh, china uh, taiwan uh, country like different country abroad I means uh, majorly abroad we are procuring so what is the current stance uh, that's a real fact no indian company as of now manufacturing a battery for the large production particularly for the electrical vehicle application so then question is then who are all the uh, who are all actually manufacturing those batteries used in uh, recently launched uh, three days before or two days before launched uh, magendra 400 electrical vehicle and tata nixon just take two these two vehicles these batteries are coming from abroad so what is coming is actually bat- cell is coming from abroad our cell powder is coming from abroad uh, we are actually you know uh, building it and uh, we are providing it but as of now even we don't have a factory for manufacturing this cell not only that one you know if you coming into the motor now pms motor is a most accepted motor in this moment i happy to say that our uh, rizal automotive uh, uh, company you know uh, our incubator company Uh, now they are uh, collaborated with the mm4g uh, they are actually they are manufacturing uh, stainless a yeah, permanent magnet motor which means the magnet cost 70% of the actual cost of the motor is goes to the mo- magnet assume 50 kilowatt motor is costing about uh, 10.5 lakhs or 10 lakhs the magnet cost alone you have to bear 6 lakhs so where is this magnet is again coming it is again coming from some mining so those india don't have any mining magnet mining and we 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 want magnet mining or we want any alternate technology uh, you know to compensate the requirement of the battery uh, to facilitate the entire indian population so the supply chain is a very big problem here uh, of course uh, even we enter into charging station the power transmitter microchips uh 
semiconductors. These are all needed. Again, the question: These are all coming from China, uh, Taiwan. So, uh, India still now it's a uh, assembly uh, factory. It is not actually manufacturing factory in respect to the electric vehicle. But hundred percent, it is not true. Slowly, the companies are investing huge money and they are procuring the land and having a joint venture with different company. And the new startups are coming and manufacturing a small, small thing like they started a two-wheel motor and they have started a, a small microcontroller, microprocessor, and they are also seeing the metal battery. Uh, metal battery is actually not uh, not required that much lithium and uh, second life of the battery and uh, without magnet, uh, you know there are uh, motors can be manufactured like uh, SRM motors, synchronous electron motor. Yeah. So these are the three area majorly we have to uh, focusing on. To deploy and operate. So let us go uh, into the motor first. So motor, how it is placed here is very very simple, like your IC engine. You see here, this is a transmission. Basically, the transmission, uh, you know, uh, uh, the motor is connected. This motor definitely creating a lot of uh, uh, thermal, right? So motor manufacturing is so easy actually, uh, but the providing the thermal capability of the motor is only very very difficult. Why? Because the question may be raised in your mind. Already motors are there. Uh, almost 100 years we are using motors. Correct. But if you see these motors are, I think there is a small noise is coming from someone else. Uh, can you please uh, ensure your mic uh, probably uh, muted? So it's good for me. Okay, fine. So thanks. So uh, uh, the temperature, you know, temperature. There are two ways we can approach temperature. One, we have to give natural cooling that is possible for that static application. Like motor, when we are using a factory, the motor is using it for some uh, other uh, regular practices. So natural cooling is possible. But the motor is probably we are fixing into the car body or fixing into the uh, mining applications, a closed uh, operational region. And then uh, when crude oil... Uh, uh, exploration. So every area, basically, the motors are uh, deeply operated. What I mean deeply operated, it's operated by the full peak power application. So definitely heat will be produced, that heat will be trans uh, able to transfer outside or this heat may be created inside issues. So the liquid cooling or any other uh, advanced cooling methods, we must be focused on. Tesla is actually very good in cooling uh, technology. Uh, so. Uh, here you can understand that this is basically power plant is converter. This is a cooling system. It's basically liquid cooling only. So that liquid cooling um, um, uh, tubes are uh, associated with this uh, motor. So uh, whatever the uh, you know heat is there, uh, that is actually circulated through the liquids pass through into the winding. So basically, uh, as you can understand, this is only an electrical mechanism for this uh, uh, power train. Uh, probably this chassis area is made by aluminium. Here, uh, the people normally uh, pack the batteries. That's it. Vehicle is actually over. You see how the batteries are packed. Uh, this is battery. So there are different kind of battery. Let us see in the upcoming slide. Uh, so this is actually a pouch battery. It is not a cell battery. So each and every battery pouch uh, associated series are parallel way. What? the requirement of the current and voltage based on that then these are all again you know uh, packing as a module so the one uh, you know um, uh, portion is called as battery modules and uh, the entire batteries can be called as battery pack okay so when we buy a battery for a two wheeler it is a battery pack suppose if you by four or cell, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, individual cylindrical cell, it is a cell. Suppose you can buy cooling system is actually coming into battery as well. This, this uh, you know, orange color, basically with respect to this Toyota model vehicle, the, this is a cooling tube. This cooling tube is actually going into battery cases as well because battery also creating a lot of heats. Even compared to the motor, battery is creating more heat. So we have to take and care that as well. Then car body, mechanically, you know well. So coming to motor, what kind of motor it is used in, uh, you know, uh, this electrical vehicle. Uh, if you take past technology, as I already represented that the motors are like this, because 
this motor like a engine ic engine so just the rotation part call it as uh, shaft is just connected to the transmission uh, input uh, couple coupling area so then you can easily accelerate uh, this is a past uh, technology whereas new technology the motors actually you know confined with a clear geometry which means a small in nature and use advanced material to take and care of the uh, heat uh, of course uh, if you take any motor your torque is very important so normally electrically we call it as a, a torque flux density mechanically you guys normally call it as power uh, torque density means power torque characteristics we talk, call it as torque flux density but of course both are same uh, if we for frame equation so uh so the motor basically needs uh cooling high power uh, torque uh, ratio uh, so uh, that is probably first uh, aspects and the second aspects that uh, the older technology the motors uh, are high voltage motors but the newer technology the old motors are coming a low voltage so what is the difference between high voltage and low voltage uh, high voltage in sense that the conventional motor say for example your water motor Uh, if it is three phase motor, four hundred voltage is input. Current is ten amps for a five kilowatt motor. Uh, so you see, current is ten amps, right? So current is proportional to the torque what you need. So uh, whereas uh, the advanced motor, particularly for the electrical application, you need a higher amount of torque. So higher amount of torque again, current is related to the torque. So you can reduce your voltage. Uh, comparing with the power equation p is equal to uh, voltage into current power is equal to voltage into current so if you reduce the voltage automatically current can be increased if at all you increase the current definitely your torque also can be increased this is another way of uh, approach how the torque can be increased into the motor so low voltage motor nowadays uh, the companies are interested uh, of course the low voltage motor even you can reduce your size but only um, you know a thing in your row voltage motor is that as the current is very very high the heat will be produced high your conductor size also you have to pro, uh, you know you have to make sure that your conductor size also is uh, bigger in size so new kind of geometry you have to build to develop a new age electrical motor the concept wise same okay electromagnetic uh, induction or faraday principle only there but according to your demand Uh, you have to uh, alter your geometry of the motor. So uh, this is what uh, the BLDC motor, uh, old technology. As you can see, the motor is just connected to the uh, shaft. Uh, before that, you have a, a, a gear, a gear, gear, uh, gear. That is, you can just make your gear change ratio accordingly. You can uh, avail your speed what you actually need. But uh, present days. The motors are coming as a hub motor. These are different. Uh, you don't want to see. You can see that what are the things are important for uh, uh, you know considering any kind of motors. So power, speed, torque, and what type of motor, what type of cooling. So let us uh, this uh, type induction motor, induction motor, induction motor, induction motor. Then PMSM motor, IPM is also known as PMSM motor. So these are structure, and these are the, uh, small small portion that which is nothing but cooling. So what are the cooling? It is you see induction motors are use normal cooling, only water cooling. Uh, here water cooling they mean that is actually liquid. Cooling. It's not just ordinary water. Uh, you know mechanically. You are using a different uh, fluid, you know, uh, to to uh, maintain the cooling. So it's case to case is different. But induction motor is very good actually. But considering all these motor torque, power density, or with respect to the torque, what you need, uh, the induction motor is not going to provide that much speed and that much amount of torque. Secondly, the size of the induction motor is also getting increased. But induction motor, we don't have any magnet inside. Whereas you take PMSM motor. A small high speed, but we are using a magnet, which means permanent magnet. So that is a need in this permanent magnet. Availability is not that much. That is a problem is in front of us. Okay, fine. So uh, this is a 
Tesla motor. Just I wanted to show that how the actual uh, motor is structured. Uh, you know, uh, so you can see this uh, shaft and uh, stator and say rotor will be there. But as a mechanical engineer, you must be understand that how the coolings are provided. So this part is very important. All this there are different the cooling cooling you know inlets are there. Uh, so these inlets will enter into all the uh, winding uh, slots. There are twelve slot available in the motor. All the downside, uh, uh, you know, the portion pitch of the slot, uh, the cooling uh, tubes are provided because uh, every slot is uniformly creating the heat. So just imagine a motor dimensions not one feet motor. In three dimension, if you take a length, breadth, height, uh, so thirty centimeter in sense that it's like closely one meter, one centimeter. That means one meter, right? Ah, uh, sorry, uh, one feet, right? So, uh, uh, what is the size? Uh, the, what is weight? It's a forty kg here, and uh, look at what is the torque? One six. Just imagine this motor is actually close to the Mardi banner. You know, this is the torque newton meter for Mardi wagon. So, uh, look at the two voltage, one is seventy-two. So, low voltage motor, efficiency more than ninety percentage. Dimension wise is one feet to one feet uh, ratio, and the weight is only forty kg. Of course, you are providing a cooling also in this uh, dimension itself. So, kind of uh, motors are uh, eventually needed for the EV technology, and kind of motors are in the practice. Okay, so present technology, uh, four wheeler. Even there are attempts actually uh, for the commercial vehicle. You know, uh, CV vehicle also they are trying. But uh, uh, in uh, refer with uh, the car manufacturer as of now, there are very few companies only having this technology. Call it as hub motor. So what is it called? Hub motor. All four wheels having a motor. So you are supplying a motor directly. So your ABS mechanism can be easy, easily possible. Your E differential also is easily possible. So if you refer with new technology of motor, this is a three-dimensional view. As you can see, the air and rim will be there. Uh, inside the rim, the motor is actually placed. Then you have different gear ratio uh, according to your uh, speed. Uh, the rotor shaft is connected, so the gear ratio only decides what speed is going into the wheel. Basically, what is happening in the engine uh, technology similar way. Uh, then the cooling system is on the back side. So, because the common cooling mechanism might be there that is entering into uh, different shaft pitch of the motor. So, this is what a new age motor. As you can see, the cross cutting view, the power ultron is converter state, which means control for the motor. Original motor, stator rotor, and and also your uh, which means uh, the shaft connect uh, into the tire body and breaking everything associated within the wheel. Uh, so, who is pioneer in the world is uh, Toyota and as well as uh, Tesla. India, no company is as of now trying trying this technology. Uh, let us see how it is. Uh, uh, the big vehicle, like a truck vehicle, this is a picture taken of truck actually. It is a whereas you can see this kind of wheels are like uh, 15 kilowatt. This is so 150 kilowatt in sense, literally, it's not possible to make it like this. So, the technology is now uh, at present is. Uh, motor is coming with all the power ultron is converters and the cooling mechanism uh, like a, a box. Okay, so just we can connect and uh, just connect the cooling tubes uh, and uh, power cable from the battery like these two cables. We can have uh, kind of so series. This kind of practices are available. Uh, so like uh, you can see the semiconductor capacitors. Coolings, cooling systems, everything is there inside. Okay, so this is two wheeler. Up motor is very famous in two wheeler. You may be surprised to see this is only a power ultron converter. Uh, 
engineers are here, but we have a question to the electrical engineers. You know, there are n number of MOSFETs are connected. There are n number of capacitors are connected. You all know that BLDC motor normally is a single switch. But here you see n number of switches are so the using all parallel parallel connected if you connect the switch as a parallel connection you can reduce your current so the low voltage uh, mosfets uh, between slow current mosfets uh, probably uh, so there are different motors actually the power of the motors also different like fact how are you using in a particular conveyor like different motors are connected in a single conveyor according to the demand of power and torque we will operate the motors right likewise uh, we can use multi motoring and connect in the single shaft according to your load payload and uh, vehicle uh, carry load you can uh, actuate your motor so that is also available but uh, think that every motors are operated by the different converters a uh, future it might be have a single converters right so uh, just keep this slide okay so fine now coming to the technology so what is the technology is going uh, maybe uh, i may say with respect to mechanical point uh, you know the axle flux motors are you no know, just uh, in mechanically if i connected uh, you you uh, in mechanical like to create both side force right for example if you take this is a rotor uh, this is not a single rotor it is a dual rotor okay so which means this rotor basically electrically this rotor will rotate because of magnetic flux produced by the stator so if uh amount of power what is our amount of flux what is appear across the rotor or if it is two stators are there more amount of flux appear across the stator correct so two stator one rotor which means there are two stator and one rotor will be there as you can see stator rotors are uh, placed in the outside so outside uh, rotor uh, technologies are available where you can connect multiple of stata so that you can reduce the motor uh, size and another uh, type as you can uh, see here uh, this is uh, you know multiple rotor with a single stata so uh, actually uh, you can see two stator rotor and a single stata and uh, uh, one rotor two stata so Uh, likewise uh, we can um, uh, create a uh, a motor uh, with the, the existing technology what is it we have different motor right permanent magnet motor switch related motor and all. so what is the advantage we can drive more power and uh, if we have a chances to uh, handle the temperature so that and all uh, is much interesting in this area so one can look out uh, probably be a future technology so coming to battery so my motor part is over now coming to battery so i am not going to take much because uh, uh, thursday uh, you know which means tomorrow arun is taking the session but uh, i will touch upon some of the areas about what is that the battery is maybe looking in so as of now uh, with respect to the car these are the four category of the batteries or energy storages um, you know uh, everyone knows about it right i have taken those only lithium nickel metal battery basically it's a metal battery category then lead acid battery is very conventional one and ultra capacitor super capacitor so if you look at any battery what is need from the battery very very simple energy is only storing into the battery so energy efficient is very important into the battery first and secondly what is your life cycle of the battery one time i am charging how long time i can charge and recharge and finally what is the cost 
so this is a, a, a common layman if, if somebody wanted to approach the battery that is what they wanted to understand but as an engineer uh, you want to understand more what is it basically uh, specific energy specific power recharging efficiency so then finally you have to contribute to the life cycle of the battery so specific energy meaning that uh, again the same thing like uh, uh, amount how, mo- how much amount of electron you can dump into that box so energy in terms of weight so kilowatt hour per ton then specific power okay energy power you know the difference between these two uh, with respect to time is basically energy right power with respect to time energy. so then discharging efficiency when you discharge it for example 100% you are storing the energy when you discharging it how much of percentage you are taking out why i have left it blank you know so people are telling 95 percentage 19 percentage 100 percentage so in case to case different but if you ask me exactly 90 93 to 98 percentage lithium batteries are provided it is a three one using lithium battery why because you see so now we ask me sir who is using pouch and who is using prismatic okay let us take tesla and the vehicle coming which a higher costly uh, i mean costly vehicle they are all going for and maybe the people wanted to cost down they are going prismatic even they wanted to go down they are going lt even they wanted to go down they wanted to go cylindrical cell now question is two wheeler having cylindrical cell battery can i go prismatic cell battery yes of course there are two wheelers are available in the market having a prismatic cell also so what is the lifetime already as i already mentioned that if you have a prismatic cell battery maybe 9 years 10 years you can use it whereas you use cylindrical battery 5 years 6 years pouch battery maybe again 12 years but these batteries are how you are laying what is the battery management system you are provided what is the uh, life of habit you are provide to the battery what i mean that life of habit you are charging you are discharging uh, this is very important what is charging you should have proper charging mechanism perfect charging scenario then perfect charger is needed then discharging discharging what i mean that uh, say for example you are having a high speed low voltage motor then you have you don't have option you have to go to either pouch cell or prismatic cell because these two are having high energy density low voltage high uh, speed it means high motor high power motor means you need high current already i told you right so in that case definitely you must be ho high energy density battery which is nothing but these two batteries but again the pouch battery you can easily understand i can give an example your mobile battery everyone every mobile having a pouch battery only so after the year goes particularly if you refer four years five years back the pouch battery uh, getting bulgy sometime later right why because once the aging happens it is quite possible get bulgy so thousands of pouch battery might be used in a full module uh, full battery pack one module may be having 20 pouch then likewise there are 200 modules are there for a car then you have to handle very very uh, in a very very precise manner so you need a perfect very intelligent bms is needed okay so let us go into a view how the factory packs happening actually you see here this is a small pouch battery all are arranging then they are making as a module they are closing with using a aluminium then they are taking a needle and there some analog signals are there some digital signals are there digital signals are going to mcu to monitor everything analog signal going to bms then all the pouches are placed in a slowly all in a that what is your packing arrangement you are fixing uh, uh, okay so uh, as i already told you cooling methods are very different so we have decide that what is our mentech uh, module with that you have to we calculate how much of uh, we generated during the different uh, because things cycle will be different i may go plain road i may go 
very tough road i may uh, climb to uh, go travel into hill so there are multiple driving profiles are there all the driving profile you must be understand how much of thermal characteristics you want to build based on that you have to go for a packing so this is very very good area uh, you know thermal handling thermal packing and molding and uh, finding out the eco materials for the battery pack and as well as the battery case uh, even bar for battery bus bar design for the battery uh, if you look into the mechanical uh, aspects a very good area and as well as Uh, very very few people are only working it's a very costly even if you have a technology you can sell it very nicely okay so battery if you I, i have a less amount of time so quickly i will uh, set something about this battery basically battery means it's coming like this you know material uh, then molecular science cell uh, system level modulation thermal power level electro analysis what uh, any fault happen how to address those faults then uh, some uh, laboratory based uh, testing everything should complete in a lab then only it is coming into a commercial cell so what i mean even our university building when you when you go uh, the chemistry electrochemistry people and physics people they are working with material right even uh, mechanical people itself uh, uh, you know the researchers are working with material so that is a first step for designing any battery then you have to go one by one one by one one by finally you this can be designed as a full fledged battery then only battery will be uh, the battery can be used as a cell or any 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 like uh, a structure you can build you can build okay so once it's built as i already told you you have to take and care of your um, health of the battery okay so everyone knows about what is that bm cities but there are much uh, you know uh, clarity is needed in the bms uh, so bms means battery management system so whatever the thermal accident happen whatever the, uh, the the recent accidents also you know uh, happens uh, the fire accident happens in the electric vehicle right so uh, the aging of the motor aging of the power train everything related to bms so why i am telling you bms is nothing but our our like um, uh, uh, sense of uh, brain when i am eating a one meal right but uh, my stomach is filled uh, so my brain say to my hand or mouth and i stop it that's it you are you are you are completed right so it's a sense uh, but nobody i don't have any sense even it may so this is what to understand uh, how the feed electron is and that you had discharging the battery again i am i am taking a meals and i am uh, it's a, it's a uh, it's a powder you know energy powder and i am i am i am uh, running a 1 km uh, uh, a small race it's fine for me uh, in the age of 42 then uh, 5 km may be possible uh, 20 km definitely is not possible suppose someone is want, ask me to complete that uh, uh, 20 km then what happen either i die or i may uh, probably admit in hospital after complete my track right so what does mean i have energy to to complete that one but i my model is not designed for that so that's the meaning so any battery is designed in terms of uh, cell uh, so eh is for battery simply eh means ampere or say for example a 100 eh battery okay 100 eh battery you are charging so 100 ah battery you are giving a current of 100 amps i assume that battery is 42 volts battery okay so 42 volts you are given to the battery 100 amps continuously what is it happen no i will draw a chart so this is soc okay sorry i don't know how mouse is, so i cannot draw perfectly so this is the downside is soc okay soc means state of charge which means 
what is my capacity of the stomach that's what soc so this is my voltage so when the soc is increasing the voltage is also increasing this is a battery chemistry what does mean when the soc is 20 percentage you must be apply 42 volts 40 43 volts like something like that now you are charging more no so you have to charge maybe towards to 40 percent soc you have to apply more voltage so which means when you are charging 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 the voltage is gradually increasing of course you are, you are, you are applying a constant current so likewise 42 when the battery is 100 percent charging if you measure the voltage across the battery it is close to 42 volts means uh, maybe close to 46 to 47 volts uh, when the battery comes 100 percent you can absolute that okay that is what charging okay so what is the current 100 amps current continuously i am charging by applying a voltage continuously i am charging one hour i am charging which means the 100 ah battery will charge fully which means 100% soc by 1 hour because 100 amps i am given that is what we so how much of current how much so 100 amps into 1 hour so 100 ah battery 1 hour it get charged correct this is a simple terms whereas every battery are prepared by a material already i told you know this material related to what is the capacity of charging you may provide so it's call it as c rating normally we say charge rating so the charge rating probably for this battery is 1 so that 100 amps current 1 hour for one c rating cell takes 1 hour time to charge full charge of battery suppose i assume this is 2 c battery okay this is battery uh, i will pass 200 amps is possible actually and pass to 200 amps continuously so pass this battery couple of taking option right the charge rating of the battery initially it was 1 now i increased to 2 which means my battery having a electrochemistry in such manner like a 2 so i can increase to so what happened this 100 ah battery if i supply current continuously half an hour itself get get charged suppose this is 10c so now 100 ah battery in front of me 10c means what i can apply 1000 amps current 100 is a current so 10c is a capacity so 100 into 10 is 1000 so 1000 amps current i can pass through the battery so within 6 minute the battery can get charged now you hopefully you understand what is fast charging it is now you tell me or guess will all the battery able to provide a scenario of fast charging not at all if it is 1c battery fast charging is not possible 3c 4c 5c like c is getting increased then the battery also can able to go for fast charge so the recent accidents what happened the market available local charger there is no cut off current just supplying a current just like that but the battery cannot afford the current what the charger is providing already the battery was in heat because the person driving the vehicle about 100 km and he stopping the vehicle uh, so that is also another problem already is got heated and uh, the more amount of current also supply into that the bms is just like a drama there because bms is not a proper bms they installed so that is the reason it got fired hope you understand why it got fired it's not a engineering issue it is a wrong engineering issue wrong engineering placement over there so hope you understand what is that accident it is what is the battery it is simple chemistry so any battery uh, bms needed what is that bms is needed i can give another example so that you can understand so first duty for any bms is you have to make a cell voltage is balanced so i have a horse vehicle there are 100 or five horses are connected in the vehicle so one horse is going very fast like a uh, usain bolt another horse is like uh, uh, 
sleeping and another horse is going like 2 20 km speed like that there is ununiform uh, you know way of uh, uh, speed i am getting from the horse then how can i drive my vehicle so all the horse you have to provide a inspection to run a same speed so that your vehicle will be very very smooth that's what happen supposed to in a first step in a battery so there are n number of cells are available so all the either charging time or discharging time you take charging and discharging characteristics for one cell if i draw i will i will draw for one cell so this is for fast charger i assume the fast charger will quickly charge this is for discharging okay so this is until this point is charging this is discharging point okay so all the cells during the time of charging and as well as during the time of discharging should have an identical characteristics is better for the system if any one of the cell over brilliant or something is sleeping it will affect to the other cell so that is the reason we have to balance the cell voltage first then again if any of the battery particularly getting temperature in a particular cell we have to isolate that battery to avoid the accident uh, we have to keep monitoring cell chemistry through the temperature because cells chemistry you can actually but it uh, then bms cost in the maybe to 200 crores cost will come so so indirect measurement you can run through a temperature inside temperature not possible so outside temperature you measure across the battery so through that you can take decision then current also if any any of the battery is uh, giving more current or feeding more current that is also you can uh, see getting so that all very important for any bms market available bms if you take 50 rupees bms is available okay 50 rupees bms is where is available now all our power bank have, having four cell eight cell and all those having only 50 rupees bms so all power bank just managing only the voltage nothing else this this we don't know about what is temperature nothing only uh, voltage just uh, uh, four mosfets but uh, not mosfet bjt is there actually however uh, go at once level you have to cost more for your information tesla is late, uh, recently last uh, the uh, e series vehicle the bms cost alone they are actually quoting 10% of battery cost uh, close to uh, 3.8 lakhs actually so you just imagine that what is the technology they have this bms is totally monitored uh, with all aspects so then uh, there are many uh, just i will skip uh, those things in front of the so what is available is called as state of charge how much of uh, battery is the rest of the uh, for the battery you have to calculate it to the smart bms so what i mean um, Uh, say for example uh, this uh, bs uh, uh, the life of the battery so like uh, uh, a person who can live uh, maybe 100 years uh, 90 90 year uh, once comes uh, uh, the bms will give that one uh, is sir like that bms give uh, a lot so those also you can actually drive through the equations with respect to the bms uh, no bms uh, analog i hope you understand what is called bmf so toughest bmf actually very smart bms okay so it's like uh, error free uh, most intelligent artificial intelligence and some other new technology and all you added it means that that is most uh, wanted bms or most uh, secured bms for the uh, battery pack so uh, charging infrastructure there are different charging infrastructure um, uh, like direct charging and battery charging so direct charge is to wire and connect to the battery so the battery is there in on board vehicle or uh, board means uh, on board vehicle uh, you provide the wireless cell phone right now you can uh, cell phone you see the battery in chair so it's like a direct charging our cell phone big suppose uh, drone or car if you take uh once this uh, battery drain we have a additional axle axillary camera i mean the battery you can change you know so that is called battery swapping method so though it is a good method but uh, literally uh, country like india is very tough uh, 
maybe the government master center can be adopted uh, but uh, practically it is very difficult so uh, lab charging there are two types one is plugging charging another one is wire charging so plugging charging like uh, on board charging off board charging on board in sense vehicle itself uh, uh, you have a, a battery charger uh, so just like that your mobile phone you can connect actually mobile charger is not uh, it's called as on board charger uh, which is uh, not a on board charger why because you are actually giving dc only to mobile phone through your charger but what i mean that on board charger uh, ac supply you can connect so i may give example like a tv you can take just connecting your supply to the tv tv and a tv is actually taking dc supply only then how come the dc is coming because there is a smbs inside to convert ac to dc okay so kind of uh, charger is called on board charger and the uh, off board charger which means directly dc supply like your mobile phone so off board charger cost probably lesser why because the additional circuit on board circuit like ac to dc converter is not needed so that is what two category then uh, wireless charger we don't want any wires like uh, what your wireless charging phone is there uh, likely you can charge your uh, bike okay so uh, this is what on board charger example as i already mentioned you see the circuit is inside so just connect your supply there so here also lot of debate is you can see in technically uh, just like that ordinary 15 amps current a whole day you have to charge suppose your uh, on board charger available of accepting more current then uh, you have to provide a high amount of uh, uh, plug point like uh, 20 amps uh, means uh, 200 amps 100 amps socket so that you can you can charge your vehicle very fast but that is on charging idea is that uh, to park your vehicle during the night time and charge the whole day whereas off board charging is a dc charging just you connect your charging pole directly from the dc supply so you can you don't want anything Uh, between the charger and the vms which means battery directly you can connect okay so that's the idea but this is a long lost this is a success model uh, dc charging model okay so wireless charging there are types one uh, the vehicle is coming and on board on the top of the one charging pad another pad will be there in the car okay so that is called as wireless charging whereas uh, the car is parking uh time you can charge that is called static charging or uh, during that time also you can actually charge this dynamic charge so simply you know flux no flux transfer is constant during the static charging whereas dynamic charging you know flux with respect to time d pi by dt both are possible no constant flux also you can make or you can change your flux with respect to time you can make this all theory uh, by the faraday so while vehicle is moving during the time you can charge actually if you are avoiding this discrete nature of the uh, flux distribution across the coil so uh, that is called as dynamic charging so this is this is going to be feature this is upcoming feature no doubt okay but uh, this is going to be feature uh, for your information uh, i have pattern in this two actually so then uh, chargers wire chargers so you please understand this uh, it's a simple uh, funny diagram but uh, you can understand this is basically a charger this is basically a battery it is give and take a proper charge charging current given to the proper battery like 1c 2c what c and what current you are given so that the case between two is good if it is not so the current is very high going to this battery this is start out to blast only so to understand those things we have different kind of uh, standards and charging ports so this charging ports normally plus and minus only there no we take sac first charging plus and minus only there whereas you can see what is this another two points these are all a communication point so this communication initially what the charger will do no small millivolts and a small amount of current it's pass through and understand what is the battery chemistry it is what is the physical structure nature of the battery based on that the current will be go into the battery so kind of practices happens then is giving that's what given day 
So these are the advanced technology as of now. But uh, don't accept this kind of technology in the law. scooter. Scooter is just like our mobile phone charger. But when you go to the car, these are the practices are available. Uh, if you take our uh, both Mahindra and uh, Tata uh, Nissan, you can see the standard charger. And other chargers also available. Jetamon, but it's all foreign standard. India standard is actually bar, uh, but uh, it is not India. It is a Europe standard. They are also following the same. It's a bar standard. So with respect to level, level one, level two, level three, level four, level five, like that will come. Level is increasing means high amount of current is going into battery, meaning less hour itself battery getting charged. So now you see people are telling combo charger. Laterally they will tell ultra charger, super ultra charger, turbo charger. Like that they will name it. Uh, so it's all about uh, the speed, how much the charger can charge the battery. So these are the AC level and this is DC level. Quickly run through the slides. Uh, some of the stands are there for charger. Maybe you can understand. Uh, not standard. I just wanted to say something. Like education, you should not disturb. Power, you should not disturb. Uh, you know what else? Temperature, radiations, everything you should follow. We have to pass through all the standards, then only you can get commercialized those charges. So actually, manufacturing motor is somewhat easy and launch, you can easily match. Manufacturing charger and launching into market is very difficult. So some of the pictures, how the practically happen, you know, practice swapping is happening like this. Uh, for the two-wheeler, it is so easy, whereas, you know, it's very difficult. We need a manpower. Suppose you assume that the buses want means you need a high mechanism, big large area uh, for that. These are the quite obvious charges for public and uh, for home and uh, workplace. Uh, slowly, it is coming actually into India. These are the commercially readily available now. HPCL and Walla in Delhi and Gurkhan and all, they have separate uh, charging ports for the taxis. And Tata Power also provides free power in some other places in Noida and Delhi. You see, this is a pilot study is going Bangalore. So, so this is everything is provided by ABB. So, what is that? It's called as flash charging. So, this is a public bus. You all know that public bus going one kilometer and placing in one place, something like that. You know? So, the charger uh, are uh, flashing the power. Uh, so, so, basically, in a minute where uh, the bus is parked, you know, during the time, uh, the bus gets charged. But it's purely AC charger and uh, of course the power also, the voltage is also very, very high. It's like a 2 kilowatt uh, voltage, 2000 two volts. So it is available in China actually, China and Japan. And that. So this is a typical, like a train power, how it is getting. But train is getting continuously, it is getting discrete energy. Okay. Fine. This is the wireless charger road, it's already available in UK. So, those things are there. And actually, uh, I have few of the slide, but uh, sorry that I uh, already took a lot of time. So, autonomous vehicle, everyone knows about what is autonomous vehicle like. The vehicle, the person is sitting and doing his work. The vehicle directed uh, to him that what the vehicle has to do according to the demand of the uh, owner. So, a lot of technology we needed for autonomous vehicle. Uh, as I already mentioned, started from contact vehicle. Vehicle automation, Internet of Things, machine learning, big data. So there are so many things is needed. One vehicle and another vehicle, you have to connect typically, handling high value of digital matrix. The deployment of autonomous vehicle is possible. So right now, Google is practicing it, but uh, as of now, uh, uh, level one autonomy only attempted. Okay, so that's all my presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, we can discuss sometime. So these are the potential area. I just keep this slide uh, for the people who are doing research, want to do research. But major, the electrical side majorly is there. But as you can see that uh, the energy management, the energy and another energy resources, development of new battery, and uh, motor design with respect to cooling system. Actually, I'm not telling about only the electrical part. It's so cooling, 
and uh, those who wanted to work in a communication say, intra vehicle network and uh, indigenous instrument development uh, uh, of course uh, the autonomous vehicle and uh, supply chain related so these are the most trusted area and upcoming area Okay, so that's all my presentation. Uh, as you can see that uh, definitely the EV will be a winner in uh, uh, so, uh, I hope so we will be uh, work toward to the nation dreams. Uh, definitely uh, the EV will be a future. Uh, thanks for your patient listening and we we have any discussion we can start the discussion